Normally, crappie activity is at its best early in the morning for an hour or so and in late in the evening. But what happens when they quit biting? How do you just keep catching them all day? Ain't no problem for me. Because when, they, when they're in timber, and here's a, a crude illustration, when they're in timber or around timber, when their activity level drops where they're not wanting to feed in the middle of the day, they'll get in this timber. All right, let's pretend that the root system is up above that two box, and that's the bank. So this tree, the end of it, is facing towards you, and your boat's about where that camera is. And then you make a cast in there with this weedless jig that tree is facing perfect right off the bat for you to fish now these fish are tucked in the thickest part of that tree oftentimes so how do i keep catching crappie all day blame day long instead of going home and coming back i'll just keep catching them because I know for a fact they get up in the thick part of the tree. This 132nd ounce jig right here will work miracles. 132nd of an ounce in shallow water trees is perfect. Because there's not, when you're reeling the bait through these limbs, there's not enough weight in the jig head to hang up in this tree. Every once in a while I'll lose one, but not much. Now, what I'll do, you have to get rid of the, the, the deal where, oh, I'm not going to throw in that tree. I'll get hung up. I'm going to lose jigs. You have to completely get rid of that to be able to fish effectively. You can't have the fear of throwing up in the middle of the tree. you got to get rid of it. Throw in the middle of the tree. Let it sink to the level to where this jig will bump these limbs as you retrieve and the best retrieve is once that jig falls to that depth where you know you're going to hit limbs just a steady retrieve and every once in a while and you don't have to do it all the time but sometimes it's necessary if they're really finicky when you're bumping these limbs on that retrieve let it fall a couple inches that will trigger an instant boom, bang. It triggers a strike from an inactive crappie. Remember, they've done fed, they're not wanting to feed, but you can continue catching those fish at will if you'll use a weedless jig and if you're not afraid to throw up in these trees. That's the way to catch a lot of fish. There he is. First fish, folks, and it feels like a good one, too. Feels like a good crappie. All right, we're going to talk about, my goodness, let's net him. He's a little bit, a little bit big to flip. That's a big fish right there. That's a giant crappie. There ain't no doubt. Look yonder. Woo. Woo wee. That's the way it started off right there. Big black crappie. It didn't take me long to, to catch that fish. I knew where he'd be. Now today we're going to be fishing on the main lake. On the main lake. Right now fish are pushing up to findable place to spawn and that's a big black crappie he ain't peeing yet they're not spawning they're just now pulling up let's talk about what we're going to do today and how we're going to do it let's let him go all right feller go on back in there and do your deal there on it now I got my power pole down right here. <laughs> I've anchored there in about 
10 feet of water right here and behind me is about seven and eight i caught that fish around eight feet deep and i'm casting i'm just using this is a two inch baby shad made by bobby garland um natural minnow i believe is the name of it and i'm using a pinkish orange looking head right there that's a 132nd ounce jig head tied with a loop knot four pound test high vis line and my favorite rack. this is my six foot eagle claw light action rod six feet long and i'm using a tournament series um lose tournament pro tp 300 it's got an extra big spoon i like that when i'm casting i like a i like a little extra bigger spoon because it don't cool the line up real tight around a small diameter spoon and it keeps your line a lot lot straighter folks but all i'm doing is casting, reeling back real slow every once in a while. I'm on pause, let the jig drop. Usually on the fall is where these fish are headed. Now that one, like I mentioned, was around seven feet deep. And I just killed it like that. And that fish hit it on the fall. There, that just triggers a bite. Just another way to trigger a bite. Now, <clears throat> well, let, let me show y'all something. Now I'm using the same color, except for the head is red. And the head don't make any difference. Don't make any difference at all. But what does is I'm using a weedless jig. That's a 40 pound mono weed guard. I put them in my own jigs. And I've shown that before. Fishing timber like this is a must. There we go. Come on up here. It's a big, big, fat, healthy son of a gun. Looks like Aunt Myrtle. Let's let her go. Right there. Oh, my boat twisted again. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, there's another one. Oh my goodness, this is a big one. Oh, this is a good one, folks. Golly, this is a good one. My, my, that fish hit it off of the tree. That's a, they, they ain't been doing that. I've been having to take this weedless jig and um, make them reflex bite it, but that one was way off the tree. Ooh, I don't want to fall. That one was way, that's a good fish right there. Golly, I'm gonna show this to y'all. And folks, that's what the old timers used to call a Jim Dandy. That fish hit way off of the tree. Every one of these fish I've been having to, to make them reflex off of a limb. In other words, take that jig and scrub up against it, make commotion, and then drop the jig a lot of times, and that's when they'll hit it. It reflexes a bite, but that fish come way off of the tree. I apologize for the wind noise, folks, but Today was very difficult with this light jig. The wind is hard to, hard to fish, folks, but the main thing I'm trying to do right here is make sure I bump those trees. That's what's getting the bites. That's what's triggering the bites. And that's what a weedless jig would do for you. If I didn't have that weed guard on there, well, I'd be hung up constantly. You can't you can't fish trees without a weed guard. There's one. 
Oh, my. He hit close to the boat. I actually, I was fixing the reel to get back in to make another cast. That would have been a mistake. That's a fat crappie right there, folks. Look how broad that fish is. We better net him. He's not. That one ain't hooked good at all. He ain't hooked at all good. There we go. Golly. That's a big one. That's a big crappie. No doubt about it. Look how broad and pretty that fish is. It's broad like that. That's a heavy fish. If he was three or four inches longer, he would be a beast. Let's let him go. We're catching him now. I had to get out of the wind. That's the last time I'm going to mention the wind. I've been griping about it a little too much. I'm fan casting, folks. That's really important. After you catch a you catch a fish, fan cast it. There you go. Fan cast it. I'm just bumping, uh, bumping that log with that jig on purpose. There he is. Mm. Well, shook his head like a bass. I kind of rushed him. Come on up here. Boy, that fish is black, ain't he? Clarence has got the green apple piles. Let's let him go right back here. On it. Ta. God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Hey. Huh. Wait. Wait a minute, man. Oh, it's windy. It's windy today. <laughs> Go fishing when you can!